IMX was approved by the CFTC. What are the next steps to get the exchange ready for trading? We're excited that after uh, a few years, uh, we're the first uh, new DCM to be issued in three years. As you know, the CFTC has uh, pretty pretty strict, thorough requirements. Next steps are our target launches in Q2. So we're in the process of uh, onboarding uh, FCMs to to the exchange and uh, working uh, on finishing up our initial uh, products, which will introduce into the market, which, you know, we, we have to, you know, go through the regulatory uh, process on, on new products uh, as well. We do uh, expect to make some interesting announcements on some uh, index licensing partnerships that will be uh, will be listing uh, some futures our futures contracts healthcare futures contracts on uh, in in Q2 as well as uh, working on publishing our own proprietary indexes which represent uh, healthcare healthcare costs and and, uh, and and contracts on those as well. What types of contracts will you offer relating to? Our proprietary uh, uh, healthcare cost indexes and in, in, in contracts. What we've developed, um, we have a we have a strong uh, data science team uh, that's been focused on uh, healthcare cost data, and so we've we've accumulated over ten years of healthcare claims data on almost every. Uh, insured in, in the United States. This is, you know, de-identified anonymous uh, data, uh, hundreds of billions of medical claims records, um, which we've used to train our uh, artificial intelligence model we call IMX GPT. Um, and that allows us to create these uh, cost indexes from, you know, maybe a very, very high level. You can think of like a, a you know, and as that 100 of healthcare in a way, you know, it kind of tracks, you know, healthcare costs on a macro level um, or, uh, you know, a condition or disease, you know, specific level, you know, major, major chronic diseases, you know, individual medical procedures, um, which may be elective, um, uh, individual drugs, baskets of drugs. Our indexes will, you know, span the range from, you know, very, very high level, broad health tracking, broad healthcare, you know, costs um, uh, all the way, all the way down to, you know, very granular individual drugs and procedures. Who are the natural market players? That's what's great about healthcare is that it is a, it's a natural two-sided market. Healthcare is almost 20% of uh, of our economy it's uh you know four and a half trillion dollar uh, a year costs you know so on so on one side you have you know service providers you know hospitals clinics that are providing services to patients treating patients um, uh, pharmaceutical companies um, medical medical device companies right that are you know, uh, providing these goods and services, and then on the other side, you have the payers uh, of the services, the, the the health insurance companies, and you know, in the U.S., you know, a majority of medium and large size employers um, are covering you know the bulk of their uh, employee healthcare costs, right? So, uh, you know, so just like in commodities, you got the you got the suppliers on one side that are kind of want to protect their the revenue and then and then then you kind of have the the payers on the other that are concerned about increase in 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 costs or or utilization you know 80 percent of our economy is uh does have access to you know futures and derivatives tools to to manage you know to manage risk and it's up to, you know 20 percent of our economy the healthcare does not right and so you know you got seven eight hundred trillion dollars of futures and derivatives that support $21 trillion of our economy. And you have zero futures and derivatives that support the other 20% of our economies, you know, drives cost transparency. It creates a, you know, a fair, a more fair market. And we think, you know, over time can actually bring down costs. Is the healthcare market correlated to equities, bonds, or currencies, or is it non-correlated? Healthcare is uh, per pretty broad, right? There are a lot of different aspects of healthcare costs and utilization, 
right? So what's interesting about healthcare is changes in supply and demand may not, you know, affect the actual costs, um, but the demand for uh, procedures does change, right? So you think of, say, COVID, you know, the very start of COVID, patients weren't weren't showing up to the hospitals for procedures and there was a big, you know, big drop off in revenue, you know, that would have been nice uh, opportunity for those, you know, for those hospitals to have had hedges on, you know, prior to the start of COVID. And, you know, these are all cash settle contracts. Nobody's, you know, delivering medical procedures or drugs. On the other side, you can think, you know, once, uh, once patients, you know, did start showing back up for their elective procedures, there was a big, you know, spike in utilization. So, you know, the payers would have, would have liked to be on the other side of that trade uh, and uh, use some of, some of the profits from that contract to, to offset their, you know, their, their increased costs. Do you foresee investment pools will want to invest in healthcare, like the massive passives in commodities? We do expect, uh, you know, you know, financial institutions will be on, you know, could be on different sides of these trades. We think that's important, you know, to bring more liquidity uh, to the market. What are you doing to engage with proprietary trading groups, and are you targeting ones with medical trading connections? Any trading firms that specialize in in, in health care, you know, are going to, are going to, uh, should be interested in this or are interested in it from our discussions. And then it's, uh, you know, it is kind of a new asset, you know, it is a, a market that, you know, was, uh, was not accessible, you know, 20% of the economy wasn't accessible, you know, um, previously. So, yeah, so we think we'll see broad, uh, broad interest. What was the hardest part of getting the CFTC approval? You know, it's it's a it's a thorough process. I mean, we provided, you know, thousands of pages of documentation and dozens of you know back and forth you know interactions and you know end to end system demo, which lasted the whole day, right? Just to show you know that all our pipes were connected. You know, so um, you know a lot of a lot of moving pieces that kind of had to come together. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, skills in our team that we, you know, that we needed. So we had to assemble a team uh, that could, you know, put all these pieces together uh, in a way that, uh, you know, would be would be satisfactory to the CFTC. And, and you know, it, it wasn't easy, but, you know, we're glad they do it the way that they do, because, you know, it does, you know, it does bring confidence to the market, you know, that, uh, that the regulatory process uh, works. What is the financial backing of IMEC? We have a group of investors, you know, from uh, industry and and venture investors um, that uh, that we pull together. Um, you know, big a big component of getting a DCM license from the CFTC is kind of you know showing you know uh, financial resources and you know several years of operating budget and regulatory capital. So um, uh, so yeah, we're we're currently you know pretty in a pretty good condition. What are your plans for hiring employees? We'll expand the commercial team. I think that'll be a big focus. Um, we'll add some more people on the products team as well. Anyone that wants to send us the resume and thinks they could think they could add value to what we're doing, it's a, this is going to be an exciting journey. Any final thoughts? We see that um, the introduction of futures and derivatives into markets is transformative. It does drive uh, uh, trans uh, transparency um, in, in in a way. We see that you know historically healthcare has been considered a cost, just a cost, and and really healthcare should be uh, should be an asset. Futures derivatives are a way to uh, to to convert costs into into assets in a way, and that's you know that that that's that's what we want to um, we expect to happen uh, in healthcare after we you know after we after we introduce these financial tools. 